Hello and welcome to Forward to the Past. In this episode things are going to get a little bit toasty as I'm going to be reviewing this vintage toaster. I have here its modern counterpart so we can do some comparisons between the old and the new later on in the episode. And we're going to be taking this apart to have a look at some of the internal workings. Now, the first electric toaster was made in 1893 in Scotland, but this model is significantly younger than that. From the research I've done, I believe it to be around 1930s to 1950s. Um, in the 1950s, there were designs coming out more like the conventional toaster that we recognise today, but this design was still quite popular for some time. Uh, so this is referred to as a butterfly toaster. The reason for that is because it basically has wings. Uh, these components here are for the bread, but we will have a look at that in more detail after we have taken the bottom off and had a look at the internal workings of this toaster. Right, so I'm going to take the bottom off this. So under here we have a little crumb tray. Um, so I bought this toaster about four years ago. Um, and it didn't have a wire on it. This is one that I've put on. So I was doing a job for someone a while ago, restoring vintage lamps. And uh, we've got this reproduction vintage wiring. Um, and I had a cut off that was too short to use on any of the lamps. So I thought, well, I've got that old toaster knocking around. I wonder if I can make it work. So I put it on. So this is very easy to remove because this is actually a crumb tray. Now. I drop it off now. As you can see, there are some crumbs in there. Now, these are modern crumbs because, believe it or not, I do actually use this toaster. But when I first took it off, there was crumbs in there which could have been 50 or 60 years old. And I'm just going to shake this off in the fireplace, bring it back. So this is the underside. So it's got Swan brand on there and Typical kind of power, 230 to 250 volts, um, 500 watts, made in England. And it also has shake crumbs out here. So that is an official British crumb tray. Anyway, so here we have the actual underside. Uh, there really isn't too much to describe here because it's very, very simple. Uh, this is the earth here, just in case the electricity shorts out but the live and neutral come in through these ones here, so connect, which go to these insulated wires. So basically, inside, the wires are connected to these wires here, or windings. So this is the exact same design that you would find in a brand new modern toaster. The design hasn't changed, it's just got a different layout. So the electricity has to pass through all these windings before it returns and goes back to the wall. Um, but these windings, just like an electric heater, in theory are too small for the electricity to pass through, so they get hot. So they've got a lot of resistance, they've got ohms basically, so they glow red. And then you've got these bars here, which are the, just there so the bread doesn't touch all of this, because if it did it would just turn it black and basically destroy your toast. So really, when it comes to it, this is not too dissimilar to a modern toaster. Right, it's time to make some toast. Now one thing I really need to draw attention to with this is, you've probably figured it out already, you don't stick the bread in the top of the toaster. It goes in the side. So this does just about fit in here. I don't know if maybe bread was made slightly smaller back then, but you have to kind of squash it to get it to fit. So what you do is you close it like that. And something else you probably figured out already is it only toasts one side at a time. So halfway through the process you need to open it up, flip the bread over and then close it again. So you might think this is going to be very time consuming, but believe it or not this toaster toasts very quickly. If I plug it in, you will be able to see how quickly, and this is stone cold, I can touch it, stone cold. I'm going to plug it in and it will come on. There we go. It's already getting up to temperature. So basically, if you were to walk away and forget that this toaster is on, 
it doesn't have a cutoff switch when the toast is done. It doesn't pop the toast out like a modern one. It will just keep going until you'll end up with a slice of carbon or charcoal or something like that. So I'm going to actually toast this now. So I'm going to stick it in here and I'm going to close the door. And I'm going to wait. Now there's different ways, depending on how toasted you want it, you can either wait till smoke starts coming out the top or you can set a timer or you can just keep opening the door from time to time and checking. So if I open it now, it's gone slightly crispy. It's only been in there for about, I don't know, eight, 10 seconds or so. Anyway, we're gonna leave it. see where that's gotten to. Nice and crispy, still at not. You can hear, listen, it's gone crusty. We'll try again. There we go. So that's nice and toasted there. You can see it kind of misses the edges a little bit because the heat source is right slap bang in the middle. But this side is nicely toasted. Personally, I don't like it much more toasted than that. The other side is soggy still, so I can do the other side and then it will be done. Right, let's see how that's doing. That's pretty good. Maybe put it in for a little bit longer. There we go. Nicely toasted. Now obviously if you're someone that likes the toast to be basically black you'd leave it in for longer but for me that's the perfect slice of toast. It's pretty hot as well. It is time to test the old and the new. Toasters, are you ready? I shall load the modern toaster. I shall load the vintage toaster on both sides. Get it to fit in there. Right, plug the old toaster in, as it doesn't have a switch. And now we play the waiting game. Wasn't ready. halfway mark with the vintage toaster. Don't tell anyone I threw that. Right, we've got smoke, that's a good sign. I'd say that's pretty much done. Yep, yeah. okay, so. Let's unplug the vintage toaster and let's have a look at the results. So, modern one's still going. Here is the toast from the vintage toaster. I shall eject this and here is the modern one. Okay, so, vintage toaster has got this far. Obviously it hasn't done the edges too, the edges are crispy a little bit but the middle has clearly been toasted quite thoroughly and even had time to do both sides despite the fact I had to take it out. The modern one, bearing in mind I have put the modern one on its hottest setting, has only just started to lightly toast it. Um, that side, barely anything. Now, this modern toaster is not an example of every modern toaster. I'm sure there are toaster enthusiasts out there who are going to tell me in the comment section below that their toaster can do it in half the time that my, my vintage one has. But uh, this just happens to be the toaster that we have in the house. And as you can see, I don't even say that this is half done by the time the vintage toaster has done it. Bearing in mind, the vintage one only does one slice at a time. In my opinion, the vintage one wins. So there you have it, the vintage toaster. Possibly better than you might have expected. It does the job just fine, despite the fact 
It's a very, very old machine. Mm. Cracking toast.